as I was getting ready to relax for the evening, <laughs> the Lord just placed it in my spirit to say this. Do not run away when they throw your past in your face. Do not run away when they will throw your past in your face. We're going to talk about Moses today. You know, before he ran away, why he fled was because you'll find this in Exodus chapter 2. And in Exodus chapter 2, Moses saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. And he, a Hebrew man, and he became very angry. He looked around, saw no one was there. He killed the Hebrew man. I'm sorry, he killed the Egyptian who was beating the Hebrew slave. And he hid him in the sand, buried the body of the Egyptian in the sand. And the next day, Moses went out and he saw two Hebrew men having a conflict. And when he went there trying to part them, one of them said, are you going to kill us? What are you going to, who made you prince and ruler over us? Are you going to kill us the way that you did that Egyptian? And Moses ran away fearful and he went away for a certain period of time. He was gone for about 40 years. And in that time he had started a new life. He had two sons and the Lord called Moses to himself. And he told him, I'm going to send you back. You are going to be the one that's going to bring all the Hebrews and the people out of captivity. And Moses would recollect and recall and think, you know, they denied me. They rejected me. How can I go back? They know the wrong that I did. They know the things that I've done in the shadows. How can I go? But the Lord still chose Moses to go back. It's amazing how God is keeping me here. Oh, you have met, we all have met and have that encounter with somebody. You may have a sibling, you may have a friend, you may have that person that at any given time or moment, oh, they love to call you out on stuff that you did in front of other people. When you're trying to help to do something, they are going to bring up something very sensitive and throw it in your face. And make you feel shame. And you want to crumble. This is why many of you are not. You are not witnessing. You are not speaking God's word. Because they know what you did. They know something about you. And because they know this thing. You are timid. You are shy. You don't want them to shut you down. And say oh you're going to talk to us about God. You're going to talk to us about holiness. When you used to steal. You that used to lie. You that used to sleep around, you that got pregnant by a married man, you that got another man's wife pregnant, you that your kids are in prison, you that's been to jail, you that used to be a, a slut. Let's put it out there because that's what they're going to say to you. They're going to try to shame you. You did time. You was a crackhead. You was a druggie. All these things used to be boosting. That's what we call in New York, you know, in Brooklyn, we say boosting. People go boosting. They go into, you know, the shops down back then, downtown Brooklyn. They had, uh, you know, these places like, you know, A&S. There's Abram and Strauss that would have been like your equivalent to a Macy's and these stores. You know, you go downtown, you go to, you know, Alby Square Mall and all these places downtown on Nevins and all of that. And you can go into the store. I never did it. I was too scared. But you will go down. You can go down there and you, you wear a big coat or whatever and go boosting, stealing stuff. And let me tell you something. There's people in your past that know these things. And what they say to you, you're keeping your mouth shut because you're afraid. Because you see, there's always somebody in your life that will do that. These people used to roll with, people that used to be robbing and stealing with. But then there's one of them that sometimes, you know, people will realize that you saved now or whatever. And they, they're not really vibing with you on it. But, hey, you're saved. But there's, you have some that will come and they're going to be bold. 
How are you going to tell me about living holy? How are you going to tell me about this when I know this about you? And then you may have that family member. It could be your mother, it could be your father, it could be your brother, it could be your sisters. They will at any moment shame you. They want to say, I know this about you. Okay? I know that you were in a mental institution. How are you going to tell me about God? I know that you are registered. I don't know how they're going to say you're, you know, used to take special ed classes. I know you didn't finish high school. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they're this type. I know you used to sell your food stamps. I know you used to sleep with, you know, so-and-so to get money. And these things are going to scare you. And these things are going to make you flee. But God is calling you out of hiding. God is calling you out of hiding because you are trying to run away from your call because what they know about you is scaring you. What they know about you, maybe in your past ministry, your mistakes that you made, you fell away from the Lord, you backslid, whatever it is. Oh, you're ashamed because you shared a very sensitive testimony with them and they know this about you. And so when you're trying to speak the word of God, they're going to say to you, oh, so you're going to talk to us about the Lord when I know this about you? Who is, who is that person that just brought up something, something very sensitive? Some dirty thing you did, just threw it in your face. And all you could do was freeze up and, and get ashamed. And you may have tried to mutter out some scripture, but you couldn't because you were so embarrassed. And you may have that person in your life, in your family, or a friend that when they see you like that, they, they go in on you. Oh, you're not talking now, are you? Ah, ha, ha. Yes, can you believe there's still adults like this? And so you're ashamed and you've locked in. But God is still using you. You may begin to doubt yourself. You may feel like you're not worthy to speak God's word and preach and teach his word. But God says the Holy Spirit that has brought you out of darkness is calling you front and center to do his work. No, you don't speak of yourself. You speak of the Holy Spirit. You speak from the Holy Spirit about a sovereign God through the blood, through the power of Jesus Christ, through his blood that was shed. So it is not you that preach and teach. It's not by your own will. It's not by your own might. It's not by your own power, but by the spirit of God. And God has never laid with anybody. The Holy Spirit has never taken drugs or alcohol. The Spirit has never done the things that you and I have done in our past. He is simply using you now as a new and new creation in Christ to do his work. Do not let anybody hinder you. Do not let anybody stop you and keep you from doing the things that God is calling you to do. You don't want to be caught standing before the throne of God, giving the Lord an excuse. Tell him what you, who you were afraid of. Tell him who said what to you because the Holy Spirit, the comforter came and he is right there. He's going to give you the boldness that you need. You see, when you realize that God has released you from the chains and the shackles, you won't let anyone from your past hold you in captivity. Oh, you are now a testimony. You can now go back and tell people about what the Lord has done in your life and speak boldly. You don't need to explain your past to anybody. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. When the Lord cleansed you, you no longer need to answer to that name that they're calling you because that is not your name anymore. Drug addict is not your name anymore. Prostitute is not your name anymore. A violent, angry woman or man is not your name anymore because you have been cleansed. You don't owe them anything and God will give you what to say to do his work but it's just in my spirit today to talk to somebody that they the, because of what they know about you a person that said something about you what they know about you a fear from your past is keeping your mouth shut and so you're fleeing from the call of God but God is saying I've called you I've called you I've called you do not let the enemy muzzle you and scare you. You know, when someone stands in the shadow, they, they you know, it, 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 
they seem or, or they stand in a light, a small reflection in light. It seems so big. I remember about a year or two ago, I was driving my vehicle and all of a sudden I just hear this loud clanking noise in my coming from my wheel, my front tire. And I'm trying to figure out what happened. I didn't have fallen in any potholes. I don't know what's going on, but it's super, super loud. And it sounds so loud. I don't even want to drive the car because it sounds as if the whole wheel will fall off the axle. It just sounded terrible. And so I eventually, well, quickly took it to the dealership. And I want to say, let me tell you, I was so scared to drive it any further, I was like, I'm going to just get the car towed and get it towed to the dealership. I didn't want to drive it. I just imagined myself driving down a highway and everything's going to fall off. So I called up a towing place, got the car towed to the dealership, go to the dealership, they look it over, whatever. They, when I finally go in, they're like, oh, a pebble got caught inside your inside your wheels you know I, they said another fancy word but this is all i know and guys when he kept that pebble he had it in a plastic bag and he showed it to me and guys it was literally this tiny tiny pebble that got caught in there and was just making this clink 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 that's what satan does he tries to scare us. And I was petrified. I was like, I'm not going to drive this car. You know, I wasn't even thinking to lay hands on the car. I was like, no, uh, yo, yo, come, come tow this car. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking about safety, all these different things. I don't want to take the chance. It's so loud. What if I cause an accident? So I get all that stuff done. But guys, that's what Satan will do. I'm here to tell you today, do the work that God has called you to do. Do the work that God has called you to do. There are people that want to bring up your past and because they know your past, you want to flee. Because you know your past, you want to flee. But the Lord has called you for this work. In Acts 7, getting down about verse 28, you will see another, this, this, this incident with Moses is being retold again. And here it's showing and saying how even though Moses was rejected, he was called to go back and save his brethren. Even though they may reject you, even though they may laugh at you and talk about you and throw things in your face, I want you to stand firm and depend on the Holy Spirit to guide your speech what to say and what not to say and sometimes you don't need to say you continue to go forth and declare the works of the lord god has called you for this time do not fear what they know do not allow your past to put a muzzle on your mouth because the lord has brought you out he has cleansed you from all unrighteousness and the word of the Lord, I believe it was to Peter. It's Peter or Paul. When the, the blanket came down, he saw a vision. And inside it was all sort of four-footed beasts and different things. And he would not eat. And he says, I will not eat anything unclean. And this happened three times. And the Lord says, what well, God has cleansed, let no man call unclean. And so I'm going to leave you with that today. What God has cleansed, let no man call unclean. The Lord has cleansed you from all unrighteousness and sin. He has set you on a solid foundation to begin to do his work. I don't know who you are, but I'm here to encourage you to go forth boldly in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God.